David Zachary Koenig was an up-and-coming amateur MMA fighter in the Branson, Missouri area. After a tough love family fight, David left his mother's house to live out of a motel. On February 8, 2020, David disappeared, leaving behind only a bag of bullets in his motel room. Recently, David's skeletal remains were found in a forest near Branson. Why and how David Koenig died remains a mystery. Welcome back to Missing. I am Tim here today with Lance. Lance, how are you today? I am doing so well, Tim. How are you today? I am doing well. And this case that we're speaking about today came in by way of private investigations for the missing. This is a person named David Zachary Koenig, who was missing at the time we got the submission. Some research had been done, a real team effort by Jennifer, by Erica, by Kathleen and Mary. So big thank you to all the researchers from PIs for the Missing. But David was actually found. His remains were actually found after the case was submitted to PIs for the Missing, but before we recorded this episode. And it stands out in that way where we usually talk about individuals who are missing and are still missing. Uh, David Koenig went missing on February 8th of 2020 from Branson, Missouri, and that's where his skeletal remains were found in a forest near Branson. Uh, How he died is a mystery, and we get into that. And it's important to listen to this because a lot of factors go into why he went missing, what he was doing at the time. He was an up-and-coming MMA fighter, so he had this future that was uh, right in front of him. Um, He had a couple of stumbles along the way, but Nothing more out of the ordinary than some people that we talk about, even, you know, in our own lives. Like everybody just has these stumbles along the way. And it seemed like he was getting himself back to that MMA status. You know, he he was, by all accounts, going to be professionally fighting. And, and then he just disappears. And there's really no explanation for it. And there's no cause of death that's been officially ruled yet. His his remains were found. There was no sign of trauma and there was no sign of suicide that was outwardly obvious. So again, very mysterious, unfortunate disappearance and subsequent death. And the Branson Police Department is not investigating this death as if there is foul play. So it's not suspected. But if you do have any information please call the Branson Police Department at 417-334-3300. And we also mentioned that the family is still searching for answers on how and why David died. So visit the Facebook page, Mystery of the Missing Fighter. And if you, again, if you have any information, you can communicate with the family there and you can get any public updates on David's case. And welcome back to Missing. Thanks a lot for joining us. Jennifer Amell, how are you? Thanks for having me. I'm doing very well. And today we are talking about the disappearance and the recovery of the individual David Zachary Koenig. This is something that's new to us. Um, This came to us by way of, again, private investigations for the missing. Uh, Jen, you you work with all of the researchers over there. What's the thought process on this? Uh, Because we had a conversation off air whether or not we should talk about this because he was missing for a period of time. He's got a pretty incredible backstory. His disappearance was very mysterious, but he's been found. And why did we come to the uh, decision to talk about it on, on the air today? Well, I think that this case, David's case, was submitted to PIs for the missing before his remains were found. So we started completing the research on this before the news broke. Um, I think last month on the 30th was uh, when the news actually broke that his remains were found. And I think we decided to cover this because there's still uh, lacking information in this case. I mean, there's still the mystery 
as to why and how David died. There's no cause of death, and we don't really know what he was doing in those woods outside of Branson. And a lot of great work is done at Private Investigations for the Missing. Check out their website at investigationsforthemissing.org and, of course, their social channels. Jennifer, who, uh, what researcher completed this research? Um, it was actually a pair of researchers who teamed up for this. Um, we've probably heard their names before, but Kathleen Studer and Mary Sarecki kind of tackled this case because there's so much information out there, a lot of conspiracy theory and stuff. So they had a lot of articles and, you know, forums to wade through to get through to the facts. Again, I'm always honored to work with these two women. They're very talented. And I just want to bring up something real quick. Even though his body has been found and we are exploring the mystery of his disappearance, it speaks to a bigger picture of mental health, of drug addiction, uh, of conspiracies, what you just said. There are a lot of conspiracies floating around. But when you look at situations like this, I think a lot of the details point in the direction of some sort of mental breakdown, some sort of emotional uh, breakdown, factor in drug addiction. So I just think it speaks to something that's not as glamorous or as uh, salacious as as conspiracies. Yeah, definitely. I think wherever there's a mystery, and we see this in pretty much every case that we cover here, but where there is no answers, people fill in the blanks with like all kinds of feats of the imagination. Um, And they want to believe that there's something deeper, something darker behind these things. But often it's just a case of, you know, an addiction gone wrong or mental health issues. But it's still important to talk about. And the Koenig family is still seeking answers about why David went missing in the first place. And David Zachary Koenig went missing on February 8th, 2020 from Branson, Taney County, Missouri. And of course, as we noted, he was recovered. David was a white man with brown eyes, brown hair, and was 25 years old, Uh, was born November 4th, 1994. He was uh, 6'6 and 240 pounds, a, a pretty big muscular guy. At the time of his disappearance, he was wearing a black shirt, two silver necklaces, a baseball cap with the word police on it. He was also carrying a black backpack. And some of the distinguishing characteristics for David, he had numerous tattoos, including a skull with wings and the word omerta on his chest. He had a scorpion on his upper right arm at the shoulder. He had the words bullpen mafia on his abdomen. He also had an appendectomy scar. He was last seen with a scruffy beard, but he is also known to be uh, clean shaven as well. He had a very muscular build and part of his left middle finger was missing due to a firearm accident. Uh, The word omerta is a Southern Italian word for code of silence and code of honor and conduct of maintaining silence when being questioned by outsiders or the government. He also trained at his father's gym, which was called the Bullpen Mafia. That's not an association with any (laughs) official uh, syndicated organized crime group. Uh, The gym was called the Bullpen Mafia, and that's the one that his father owned that he trained pretty religiously at. Yeah, and I just want to mention here that it's still important to give these uh, statistics on the missing person, even though his remains have been found. If anybody's out there who has seen this man um, before he disappeared or uh, knows of any of his movements before he went into those woods, I think it's really important to mention what he looked like, what tattoos he had in case it jogs somebody's memory. David Zachary Koenig was the oldest of three children of Tracy and Rick Koenig. He had both a brother and a sister, and the family relocated to Branson from southern New Jersey about 12 years prior to David's disappearance. And David's dad stated, He's not only my son, he's my best friend. And David was close to both of his siblings, but his sister, who was eight years younger, was his shadow. And their mom said that they're so alike, they're basically the same person, and he wouldn't go long without contacting her. As mentioned before, David was an amateur MMA fighter, and that's because his dad ran that gym and he trained really hard. He was well known in the community as he had a pretty magnetic personality. He was loud and opinionated, and he would stand up for anyone. There's a quote here from CNN. It's uh, from JT Tilly, who was the head coach at the Branson Fight Club. He said, training with David was always a pleasure. He cared about the group and was always there to listen and support his teammates. Truly a gentle giant. 
and a gentle giant who also sang and played guitar. Um, but unfortunately, he suffered from narcotics addiction, uh, which getting into the gym uh, kept him grounded uh, and taught him how to not only fight at the gym, but fight his addiction. And as we all know, addictions are demons that keep coming back. So he was constantly haunted by this. Uh, but really, like, hats off to him and hats off to his dad for keeping him in the gym and training because that is a huge distraction from it, um, from having any sort of desire to um, inflict that type of harm on yourself. If you're focused on on your MMA training, that's a, that's an incredible way to uh, supplement that, um, to fill that void. Absolutely. And it seems like he had a, a really promising like starting career in MMA or just looking at the fights he had, he did lose his first bout, but he won three others. And that definitely shows that he was moving up in the MMA world. And I think um, he had posted on Facebook right before his disappearance that he was in a new relationship with a girlfriend. And as an amateur MMA fighter, he had quite a following in the circuit around Branson. David had four fights under his belt, and a fifth one was scheduled that uh, was derailed by him accidentally shooting part of his finger off. And this was thought to be one of the reasons why David may have gone down the narcotics path again as he questioned his ability to continue in MMA fighting. That's so sad. I find it so sad when like a professional athlete injures themselves because they've spent their whole life kind of training for this one path in life and they're so dedicated to it. And then one little thing happens and it like throws your whole life off kilter. So I totally understand why David may have turned back to narcotics, especially because of the pain. I imagine um, with shooting part of your finger off, like he would have to be on some kind of pain medication for at least a little while, but also because he was probably really depressed after such a thing. And I'm not sure if he was actually prescribed something for the pain for that accident, but I can imagine that he was terrified to to take anything for it, knowing that he's just, you know, one pill away from falling off the wagon and, and going back into that spiral again. And Branson, Missouri is a city in the southwestern corner of the state in the middle of the Missouri Ozark Mountains, and it has a population of just over 12,600 people as of 2020. And it's known as a family vacation destination with theaters lining the strip and an 1800s-themed amusement park. And the theaters originally mostly had country music shows, but now many different genres of music can be heard there. Sounds like a cool place. I would like to visit. I have been in the Ozark like National Park once, and it is vast. So some details on David's disappearance. Apparently, David and his mother had a, uh, quote, tough love fight around February 6th of 2020. Of course, his mother, Tracy, loved David. It was her son, but she also had two other younger children to think about and was concerned about David's addiction, so she asked him to leave the house due to just wanting to protect her family, even if it meant saying that he couldn't come home until he got his act together. And we hear about this a lot. Like, you have to have some sort of um, line that that needs to be uh, established and in order to get help, in, in order to realize, like, you've kind of hit bottom or you're going to hit bottom and we're trying to help you. Man, what a conflict to have between like choosing a son and your other kids and and knowing that it's potentially not a safe or good thing for the other kids to to see happen it's like their brother go down this route of addiction it reminds me of a case we covered a few months ago um aj johnson and his wife amanda kind of had to make the same decision aj was uh using drugs again and she was like listen like i love you but you have to get clean before you can come back into the house with the kids I can't imagine that's an easy decision to make. No, and I can't imagine that his mother would have made this decision if she didn't think that David would be able to pull himself back up or have a support system around him. I really think that his training at his dad's gym was something that might have been in the back of her mind, knowing he, he always had a community he could go to that would accept him if he you know goes to the gym, even if he's not training because of his finger. He can still go and he can do as much as he can without using that particular hand. You know, So I, I, I would like to think that she knew she wasn't kicking him out on the streets with nothing. And David stayed at the Peachtree Inn off of Green Mountain Road the nights of Thursday, February 6th, and Friday, February 7th. The owner was a friend and fan of his, and he had recently lost his phone, so he was using another device on Wi-Fi to message people. And he messaged his brother a happy birthday that day, and that was the last the family heard from him. 
And that same day, he also messaged two of his friends that he was in trouble and could use some help and a ride. One friend wasn't able to help as he was watching his three-year-old while his fiance was at work with their only vehicle. And the other friend was out of town on business and didn't see his message for a while. When he got back to him, David didn't respond. So this is strange. We don't really have any elaboration on what the kind of trouble was. I, I guess David didn't have a car at this time. Do we know? No, I guess we don't know, but it, it would imply that, huh? Yeah, and I guess David didn't have a vehicle, so maybe he was um, messaging his friends for a ride somewhere. But I wonder what kind of trouble he was alluding to. When I had read this for the first time, guys, I had taken it into consideration that he was saying he was in trouble, maybe wanting to do drugs again. Maybe he knew that he needed to be around people and he needed some help so that he didn't uh, fall back into the uh, the drug addiction. Yeah, could be. Yeah, well, I guess David also mentioned that he needed to keep, quote, hands free which I guess is open to interpretation. I don't know if he means like to keep his nose clean or something like that, or if he's like, like needs, needs like a Bluetooth headphone to keep his hands free to drive or something, but apparently he didn't have a car. Yeah, I don't know what free hands means. But Tracy wonders why David didn't contact his dad at that point because they were so close and he had always messaged his dad. And she also said to the media for David to hear, I love him, he can come home, and we will help him no matter how difficult things are. We're all here for him no matter what. And I wonder what the context of that hands-free comment was. Maybe, maybe he misspoke and said he needed to keep his hands busy. Maybe he needed to keep busy. Yeah, I don't know. To, to distract himself. But, you know, we're just speculating on, on that. I am just curious what the context of that entire, uh, I guess it was a message that he sent, what that entire sentence was. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm also trying to get into David's head about this time, like why he wouldn't contact his dad. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thinking, like, if I were in that situation and I was struggling with an addiction and my mom kind of asked me to leave the house, I might be really embarrassed to reach out to my family and like, like thinking like you have to handle this yourself. You have to be a man. You have to like, you know, pick yourself up by your own bootstraps and like beat this addiction. Maybe that's why he didn't contact his family if things were going downhill. I was kind of thinking the opposite, to be honest, um, that really? he was contacting his friends, um, not for not only a ride, but for drugs. I mean, you know, if you need a ride, you can contact anybody. But if you need drugs, you're not going to call your parents, too. That's true. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't seem like his friends were also drug users. Yeah, I kind of think it, it might depend on what drug, too, he was uh, looking for or addicted to um, that may depend on who he contacts. Good points on both sides. I mean, he did message, like you said, two of his friends uh, did specifically say he was in trouble could use some help and and did need a ride. Um, and I can see where you're coming from, Jen, about being embarrassed to your family and not contacting his dad. His dad ran that gym. Uh, it would be a disappointment for his dad to know that he was potentially falling off the wagon again. Um, maybe he was trying to get back. Maybe he was trying to get back so that he could talk to his family, you know, face to face. I'm also wondering what the living situation was in this family too, because I think his parents were still together, no? It appears like that. And, and I would guess that the siblings also lived there because they seemed younger. I mean, David was only 25 too. Yeah. So like, wouldn't his dad know what was going on if his mother asked him to leave? Yeah, but no one would have known he needed a ride unless he contacted them. And where did he need a ride to? I mean, if he needed a ride to the gym, you know, you just would have called your dad in that case because he was probably going there too. And we'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsors. Thanks to our sponsors. And now we're back to the program. And on the next day, Sunday, February 9th, it was reported that he stopped by a high school friend's house in Merriam Woods, an area to the northeast of Branson. And again, David didn't have a car, but arrived with two other people to the house and left with those same people. No one knows what kind of car David was in with those folks. So it seemed like he did get that ride, right? Found somebody to get a ride with. So we don't have names of those people who whose car it was or who was with him, but potentially the police do. 
And there was a possible sighting of him in Forsyth, Missouri, on Tuesday, February 11th. And then in late February or early March, a female friend of David's stated that she saw him at a gas station in Springfield, Missouri, which was a city that he would go to often. She stated that he wasn't looking good, and she even offered him a place to shower and clean up, but he declined, uh, which is incredible to note. Like, how bad does someone have to look for you to offer to take them in to shower and clean up? Yeah, it's really sad. Yeah, good point there. And David didn't usually have any money, but a few tips that came in mentioned sightings of him having quite a bit of cash with him. Um, So I don't know how credible that is, but because David had previously dropped out of sight for a couple days to a couple of weeks, his family didn't officially report him missing until March 6th, 2020. Yeah, that's that's quite a bit of time to pass without any kind of law enforcement involvement. You don't really know what he was doing in those weeks, and you didn't have any kind of search of that motel room until, you know, that week in March. I wonder if David paid the the rates for the hotel through March. I'm guessing probably not. Um, so it is it is odd that um, the only thing he left behind in the hotel was a bag of bullets. So I guess he kind of checked out, um, but left a bag of bullets which is uh, peculiar. Yeah, I mean, that speaks to him owning a firearm of some sort, but we don't really have any report of uh, him owning a firearm. If he used it for personal protection or if, or if he had just purchased it, we don't know. Now, there were numerous sightings for David by both the police and the community on foot covering the area around the Peachtree Inn. Uh, In August of 2020, the Koning family organized four search parties to try to locate David around Branson. And in the summer of 2021, they even put up some billboards along the highway. I believe it was Highway 65 alerting motorists to David's case. And if you look at the billboards, I mean, he's, he's there apparently after uh, a match and wearing no shirt you can see his tattoos he's flexing it's obvious to me that this person had a magnetic quality to him yeah he if you look at pictures of the billboard it he looks like a superhero he's like yeah flexing with his arms up he's really muscular he's tatted up and stuff it really does beg the question it's like if somebody harmed him how he was a giant yeah yeah, it also kind of makes me wonder um, how bad he was looking again to to a point a few minutes ago, like uh, to be offered a shower. Like, uh, you know, she said he didn't look good. Like the guy looks good. You know, he's a handsome guy um, for him to not look good. How bad did he look? You know? Yeah. And in September of 2021, the family brought in a nationally known private investigator named David Marshburn to look into the case. And a Branson area director slash producer also started working with the Koenig family to produce a documentary film about David's disappearance. His girlfriend was additionally interviewed by police and she told them all of his things were at her house. But one day when she was at work, she came home to them being all gone and assumed that David had stopped by to get them. Nothing of hers was missing, but it's rumored that they had gotten into a fight a couple days before February 8th of 2020. As mentioned before, this was a new relationship for David, or at least it was Facebook official new. (laughs) Not really sure how long they were going out, but I wonder why his girlfriend wouldn't offer him a place to stay if he was kind of as down and out as we think he might have been. Yeah, maybe around that time he wasn't as down and out. Maybe he was teetering and and they had this uh, this fight. Um, I'm not sure how bad it was, but maybe it wasn't so bad where she didn't think he would give her a call or, or, or come back later on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, how long was he at that hotel? It doesn't sound like he was there that long. Like, I, I don't think many people would have known that he was, you know, in that situation at all unless he called them and he only called a couple of his friends. Yeah, that's true. It was only a couple of days that he was staying at the Peach Tree Inn. Now, in November of 2021, search efforts resumed around Hollister, Missouri, which is southeast of Branson, where police thought there would be a a very good chance to find new information about his disappearance. It was comprised of police and volunteers, and they searched a wooded area off of Highway 65 in town. 
And one man that was planning to join the search efforts was doing so because his daughter vanished for a time, giving him a strong connection to what the Koenig family was going through. And uh, police weren't divulging why the search was in Hollister, keeping the investigation information close to the chest. Yeah, I wonder what led them to the town of Hollister. Because we don't have any of the um, confirmed sightings of him placing him in Hollister, do we? Not that I know of, but it's probably information from the people that he was with is my assumption. Yeah, so we don't have any actual confirmed sightings of David that we know of in Hollister, but that was a town that was very close to Branson, only two miles away. It would take about six minutes to drive if he was actually driving in a car with somebody. And on December 22nd, 2021, a deer antler hunter located human remains in the 3700 block of Fall Creek Road in Branson. A search by police located the remains and several personal artifacts, including a wallet. And through all of that, it was announced on December 28th that those remains were identified as David Koenig. And after an exam by a forensic pathologist, it was determined that there was no trauma noted and the death didn't appear to be the result of foul play. Still, the exact circumstances of what happened to David aren't known. His mother, Tracy, has been pretty vocal about letting everybody know that his death isn't involving any kind of conspiracy theory and that he just died. Tracy told CNN that we are just heartbroken. And although Dave's been missing and gone for 22 months, it doesn't make it any easier. What we are feeling now is just indescribable pain. And Tracy wrote on social media that he was not shot, stabbed, no broken bones of any sort. He wasn't robbed, as his tattered wallet was still intact, as well as the two silver necklaces he almost always wore, amongst some other things. End quote. Yeah, so robbery doesn't look like a likely scenario, especially... I mean, the true mystery of this is like where his remains were discovered in these woods. Did he go out there himself? Was he with other people? I mean, the possibilities are kind of endless. So even though his body was found, that still doesn't provide any answers for the family. They're still searching for why he died. Uh, They maintain the Facebook page Mystery of the Missing Fighter. And that is to collect information and keep the public updated on David's case. And it seems like he walked um, away from more populated area, Um, just looking at the map where he was at the hotel, and he just kind of walked towards some woods and some water down there. I don't know uh, what was going on in his head, but it almost seems like like a calm, kind of lonely walk. Yeah, I don't know if the... I think the police have ruled out any kind of foul play and David's death. But I'm not sure if they're considering suicide as a feasible thing that might have happened to him. It certainly looks like um, David's life was kind of really hard at that moment. And um, maybe he just didn't feel like he had a way out. But if anyone does have any information on what happened to David Koenig, you are instructed to contact the Branson Police Department at 417 334 3300.